AMD Ryzen 9000 Zen 5 CPUs have been confirmed. AMD is set to launch Epic 4004 series for AM5 sockets. Intel XCSs has been added to two new popular games. And lastly, a new competitor is here to compete into the CPU market. Okay, so first of all, we have the AMD Ryzen 9000 Zen 5 leaks are basically a confirmation coming from Gigabyte. And they have basically leaked out this information about Ryzen 9000 coming very soon as a Zen 5 CPU. So the Ryzen 9000 series codenamed Granite Ridge will be powered by the Zen 5 architecture. Basically, all current AMD AM5 motherboards will be compatible with these new processors as these are based on the AM5 platform. And now Gigabyte has basically confirmed it by saying that AMD Ryzen 9000 will be coming for their new upcoming BIOS support. So yeah, that basically confirms it right over here, as you can tell, is that a Geisa 1.1.7.0 beta BIOS for the coming AMD Ryzen 9000 series processor boot up support for on Gigabyte AM5 X670, B650, and A620 motherboards. And of course, the 7800 series will be supporting as well. But the main factor is basically that 9000 series will be coming soon enough because already the BIOS support is here. So we can safe to say the release date for the AMD Ryzen 9000 Granite Ridge CPUs will be releasing soon enough. Next up, we have AMD is set to launch their Epic 4004 series for AM5 socket. That's quite interesting to see that because AM5 socket with Epic doesn't really go well because we've never seen that before. But now we can see it, which is very strange. An Epic processor for an AM5 platform? We've never seen this before, have we? So this one will be the consumer Raphael chips will be soon available for this new variant. And this data center variant will be called 4004 series basically so this is the leak we got to see from hong and fu and basically we're seeing this leak here which is the epic 4004 raphael based of course am5 1px 3d variants exactly that's what you're hearing there would be two particular variants epic 4004 non x3d and also x3d there will be two types of them so that is massive already epic processors coming to am5 is already a surprise also with x3d variants it's a big surprise now the question would be will these processors support the general chipset which is the b650 or x670 that is a good question that if they're coming in am5 will there be supporting these chipsets or there will be a different kind of chipset for the epics processors we don't know that for sure but my guess would be they will be supporting the b650 and x670 chipsets because am5 basically what they say is it's am5 so that shouldn't be a problem is it we'll see about that because i would be surprised if they support the rdimm so that would be an interesting thing to see not sure will there be a new chipset or they will be supporting the existing chipset we'll see about that next up we have intel xcs's update here and basically they're supporting two new games and these are Horizon Forbidden West and Avatar's Frontiers of Pandora. So basically our Horizon Forbidden West and Avatar's for Frontiers of Pandora has brought in their updates to the game and basically that confirms it. So at Nexus Software, they have basically posted this at their the axe here and Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition 1.3.55.0 release notes. And in these release notes, we get to see these updates and well you can clearly tell updated intel xcs's to version 1.3 with improved image quality and new xcs's native double a option there are other release notes here obviously but of course xcss being the main star here because you know xcss is still not available in multiple games and we get to see for the first time on two more popular games which is the horizon forbidden west also the avatar frontiers of pandora the patch notes title update 3.2 and as you can see in the notable improvements, we get to see two options here for Xbox Series X and PS5. They have added a 40 FPS mode. And for the PC, they have enabled Intel XCS's super sampling. The question is, which version of Intel XCS's has been enabled? Not for sure, but I'm guessing this is the latest one. That should be the case. Also, one problem in this particular game is that AMD FS3 has been temporarily rolled back. Basically, they're facing a problem with the latest FS3.0. So I'm guessing that it has been rolled back to the previous version. That is quite interesting to see that. But I guess they will be able to fix it because you know they are started to 
bring in Intel XCSs to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, so that shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, two more new games added for the Intel XCSs. Intel XCS is getting very competitive, I guess. And lastly, we have something interesting here. Qualcomm Snapdragon X Plus specifications have been leaked, and the performance do suggest that it's going to be competing into the flagship CPU market. Well, maybe not the flagship, because the performance that we're seeing from the 10-core series of these processors are looking pretty promising. So video cards have leaked this information here, and we get to see these variants for the Snapdragon X Plus. And yeah, Snapdragon is not using x86 architecture, rather ARM-based CPUs. So yeah, this is quite interesting to see it because ARM-based CPUs competing head-to-head -head with an x86 processors is quite interesting to see that. And pretty exciting at the same time. This probably is the future for the ARM processors. So basically, this is the league we get to see here. As you can see, the Snapdragon X series platform SKU comparison table we get to see. So there are multiple processors reaching up to 12 cores and the least one is 10 cores. So that's quite interesting. 10 to 12 cores. Now, the question is, if all these cores are performance cores or efficiency cores included, we're not for sure, but probably is because it's an ARM-based processor, right? Now, we can see there are four variants of this processor, which is X1E8400, X1E8000, 7800, and 64100. Basically, these are the variants we get to see. And the first two, first three of them is 12 cores, and the last one, which is a 10 cores based CPU. And yeah, the total cache for all of these processors is 42 megabytes. So even the L3 cache is quite big in terms of you know having a l3 cache as for the max multitude frequency is not quite much i would say it's a basically a base frequency i would say because you know they don't really uh, say it's a base clock but i would say it's a base clock because they do have dual core boost which is also available but for the max multitude frequency you get to see 3.8 3.4 so the obviously the top of the line 12 cores processor is getting 3.8 and the rest of them are getting 3.4 but in the dual core boost we get to see 4.2 gigahertz and and 4 gigahertz the rest of the information is not available also they have the igpu available which is quite interesting which is the qualcomm adreno gpu and qualcomm hexagon npus so the qualcomm adreno gpu is coming with 4.6 teraflops not that strong but again they're giving that headroom for the igpu so that's pretty good so 4.6 teraflops for the top of the line and then 3.8 for the rest and for the npu toyopis we get to see basically 45 all around so yeah not only that we get to see some benchmark here for the 12 core variant here not sure which 12 core variant but anyways let's see it in the geekbench 6.2 in the single thread performance we're looking at 2850 to 2900 so for reference we get to see amd ryzen 7600x performing around 2864 and the ryzen 7 7700x performing at 2910 so basically it's around that level of performance so it's quite good actually quite good and also when when you see the multi-thread says we get to see 15.1 to 15.4 thousand and again when you see the reference here is similar to the amd ryzen 7 7700x so that level of performance coming from a 12 core processor is quite good not gonna lie it's pretty good and remember that's not quite full 12 cores is you know combined with efficiency and performance cores so that's pretty neat so also yeah we have the 10 core variant here which is also you know performing around the ryzen 5 7600 i'm guessing that would be the case because you know the 12 core variant is around the 7700x so yeah that would be the case here that is quite interesting how they're going with the snapdragon x elite processor the x elite and the x plus basically the x plus for the consumer based budget variant cpus and for the x elite and the x elite for the flagship range of processors so yeah that's quite interesting what do you think about these processors do you think they'll be able to compete and really really give the promise that we, we see in these benchmarks or will it be a letdown you tell me and yeah like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys tomorrow for more content